Well, happy Epiphany, everybody. Not only is today Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, but it's actually also Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany comes from the, a Greek word meaning revelation or manifestation or appearing. It's the season of the church between Advent, Christmas, and Lent. It's the season where we celebrate the revelation of Jesus being human and starting his earthly ministry among us and showing us the signs and wonders of God's power in our midst. It actually started yesterday, January 6th, and we mark it by remembering the story of the Magi coming to seek out that baby that had been born in the manger and calling him king and laying before him those gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Celtic Christianity calls this season of Epiphany a season of thin places. That's referring to that veil between heaven and earth that just becomes a little bit thinner. And we're invited to look just a little bit deeper and expect God to show up in wondrous and surprising ways. It's a season where we witness Jesus performing those miracles of healing in the stories of Scripture, where we see Jesus revealing over and over again that he is the Messiah that we have all been waiting for. Today, Pastor Chris and I return with all of you to the Gospel of Mark. We started our journey through Mark way back in the fall. And we did that first part of the Gospel of Mark that focused on those revelation stories of who Jesus is. And we ended with that epic story where Jesus gathers with his disciples and says to them, who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? As we return to the Gospel of Mark, we're going to continue to dwell on those two questions. Who does scripture reveal Jesus is to us? And who do we, in turn, say Jesus is? But before we pick back up in Mark chapter 9 or 10, as we will next Sunday, we're going to focus back at the beginning of Mark, which is Jesus' baptism story. So we're beginning at the beginning once again to remind ourselves of where the story of Jesus' earthly ministry takes place. Place. So I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's in this season of epiphany where we hear the voice of God breaking through into our human existence, where we see signs and wonders like a dove and water being transformed into wine, or we see those healing miracles, as I said earlier. It's the season where we get to enter into the deep waters with God. Now, how many of you have ever been to the doctor or seen your therapist or talked to your mother, and one of the first questions they always ask you is, are you drinking enough water? <laughs> Any of you get annoyed with that question? Because I know I do. It's so my New Year's resolution this year is to actually drink enough water every day. Because science has shown us that physically, we feel better when we drink our allotted amount of water. Mentally, we are clearer and feel better if we drink the water that our bodies crave. But it's also true for us in our spiritual lives. Water is a key symbol throughout scripture, and we need it to thrive in our faith. From the primordial waters of creation, when the world was formless and chaos and God spoke and separated the waters from the sky to the waters below, water has been essential to life and flourishing. 
from the waters that cleansed the earth and gave us a new opportunity as humanity to try once again to dwell with God well in the flood narrative. Or the river water that rescued a baby Moses and led to him redeeming the people of Israel. To God showing his power and might by parting the waters of the Red Sea and taking a people from slavery into freedom. Or the waters that God transformed from bitter to sweet to sustain his people. Water plays an integral role in God's people's lives throughout the story of Scripture. It's a symbol of cleansing and renewal. People go through the ritual of entering into the waters to be made clean before God. They're included in stories of healing in the Old Testament and in the New. Therefore, it makes all the sense in the world that Jesus, the representation of God with us, would start his ministry in the water. In our baptism liturgy in the Reformed Church in America, we say that water cleanses, water renews, water sustains us. And that in the water, all the promises of God are made manifest for us. For it makes sense that Jesus would start his earthly ministry by entering into a water that John called a water and baptism of repentance when it's something that Jesus himself did not need. <laughs> Why would a sinless, perfect human being need to enter a water of repentance? And the simple answer is that there is no place Jesus goes that we do not go. <laughs> Jesus was fully human and fully God. And so he entered those deep waters for us so that he could take on the shame, the guilt, the pain, the suffering, everything that gets washed and cleansed in those waters. And so that he could come out of those waters and lead a life of newness for us. But it's in these waters as Jesus comes out that we hear the voice of God proclaim upon him, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Pay attention to the fact that these words are said over Jesus before he does anything in ministry. He hasn't called his first disciple yet. He hasn't done a healing miracle yet. He hasn't even said anything yet in the Gospel of Mark. And God has already declared him to be beloved. And with him, God is well pleased. Now, it is true that it's because Jesus is God that God is able to say these things over him, but it's also true for us that God is saying this over humanity as well. These are the words of our identity that are promised to us in the waters of baptism. They are soul-giving. They are life-giving, as necessary to us as water is to the body. There is nothing more important that the world can label you as as the way that God has already labeled you, and that is beloved, that is well-pleased, before you even need to do anything. Max Lucado has a adorable children's story called You Are Special that highlights this truth for us so well. And perhaps you have read it before, read it to your children. But it tells the story of little wood, wooden people called the Wemmicks. And in this society of the Wemmicks, they give to each other stickers. Gray dots if you've done something bad or caused suffering of some kind. Gold stars if you are excelling in some sort of gift or treating people well. And the Wemmicks give these stars and dots out freely as part of their societal structure. And there's one Wemmick by the name of Punchinello who only has gray dots. Poor Punchinello can't seem to do anything right, and some people just give him gray dots because he already has gray dots, so they think they should just throw more gray dots on him. How he longs for someone to give him a star. But as the story goes on, one day, Punchinello sees another Wemmick by the name of Lucia. 
Lucia has no dots and no stars on her. She is pristine and clean. And Punchinello finally works up the courage to ask her how that could be as he watched people give her stars and they would just fall away from her. And Lucia told Punchinello, you need to go see the woodcarver, Eli. So Punchinello went and creeped into Eli's workshop. And Eli greeted Punchinello by name. And he listened as Punchinello told him his woes about never getting a gold star. And Eli told Punchinello that every day he needed to come and see him. For the reason that nothing stuck to Lucia was the fact that she believed in the voice of her maker, not the voice of the other Wenix. For Eli said to Punchinello, you are mine, I made you, you are special. And slowly but surely, as Punchinello learned more and more to trust the voice of his maker, the dots started to fall away. And he was a new creation from the words of his maker that he trusted. It's in these waters of baptism that we are reminded that Jesus Christ himself is living water. It's in these waters that we remember our only comfort in life and death is that we are not our own but belong body and soul to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who has already walked through these waters for us and claimed us as God's own. Will you trust the voice of your maker? Will you live into your baptismal identity as a community of faith and share that truth with others? Will you walk through this season of epiphany, drinking your water <laughs> and reminding yourselves of the gift that God gives us in these waters of baptism? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so this morning, we are going to take our time to remind ourselves of those promises of God, to remind ourselves of the vows you may have made in your baptism, or those vows and promises the community of faith may have made for you. I want to be clear that this isn't baptism this morning. So if you've never been baptized and you long to be baptized or want to learn more about that, then please talk to Pastor Chris or myself or an elder after worship today. We would love to celebrate this sacrament with you. What we are doing this morning is for those of us who have been baptized and long to renew those vows and reaffirm those promises together.